Hi and welcome to this episode of John's Motorcycle Rescue and Review. Today I am going to be showing you how to service a 2018 Suzuki GSX-S 750. And the process that I'm going over today is, is really the same for most bikes. And so I'll just go ahead and fire the bike up. I'm going to take it for a short ride and get it up to temperature. And we'll come back and start in on the service. Okay, before I actually go for a ride here, what I'm going to do first, and this is really, if you own a motorcycle, it's something you should be used to doing at least on a re regular basis, like a weekly basis, but I am going to check the tire pressure, the front rim, 36 PSI cold, and the rear rim is 42 PSI cold. So, I have just checked those and uh, like I say, that's a pre-ride procedure, and I also just had this rear tire put on. The, the rear tire on this bike was shot when I got it, and so this is a brand new rear tire. So when I go for a ride here, I'm going to be extra careful and kind of work this tire in. When you, Whenever you get a brand new tire put on, they can be a little bit slick at first. And uh, you just want to be careful, kind of slowly work them further over on the edges. Another thing that I've done pre-service here is I have mounted a battery tender. And I've also made sure that this was plugged in overnight. And so I've got a full charge on my battery. And what that's going to do is when I test the charging system once the bike is warm, it just gives me the most accurate reading. So again, I put on a battery tender on all my bikes and I always make sure they've been on at least overnight before I check the charging system. So just a kind of a heads up there. All right, we'll go for a ride, come back and start in on the service. The bike is fully up to temperature now and uh, one of the things that is on my checklist is to make sure that the fan kicks on at operating temperature and I just heard that kick on so that is an item on the checklist. What we'll do right now is just take a look and make sure that all our lights are functioning. This bike has different running lights in some motorcycles. It's actually got the running lights here and here instead of in the turn signals. So those are working. The headlight works. And that is high beam. The low beam works. Turn signals work front and back. I can see that here. Let's walk around. Those work. Lights are functioning as they should. The horn works. And uh, the rest of the stuff we'll go over here shortly. Um, and then while it's also while it's up to temperature, what we're going to do is look underneath the bike and make sure that our coolant level is where it should be. And when it's warm, you can see right there it's at the full mark. So this is my voltmeter. We're setting it to DC voltage. All right, as you can see, our drain plug is pretty well centered right underneath the bike. All right, I've got my 17 millimeter socket on there. All right, another good sign. I don't really see a lot of 
metal shavings on the magnet here on the drain plug. And that's something I always look for when I'm changing the oil, but that looks good. Okay, once the exhaust pipes cool down just a little bit, I was able to get my oil filter wrench onto the oil filter. And I've got two extensions here kind of coming out through the exhaust pipes, and I'm going to just go ahead and loosen that up and take the oil filter off. Thankfully, it started turning right away. It's not on there too gorilla tight. It's always a bad sign when people over tighten things like oil filters. And when I put the new one back on, I'm just going to hand tight it. I, I honestly don't like to use an oil filter wrench to tighten oil filters. Uh, they're just, it's too easy to over tighten them and then they're just a bear to get off. So I'll go ahead and finish removing that. So this is my new oil filter. It's an HF138 high flow filter. I've used these for years and I, I like them. They're cost effective, but they're a quality product. Right now I'm using motorcycle specific 10W40 motorcycle oil. And I'm actually gonna put a little bit of it in the filter prior to putting the filter on the bike. And that just helps it not do a dry start when I start the bike up. I'm not going to fill this all the way to the brim. What happens is when you fill it up, it, it, the oil soaks into the paper element and goes way down on the filter itself. But because this mounts horizontally, I'm not gonna fill it too many times. I'll fill it about twice here and then I'll let that soak in and go ahead and put that on the bike and hand tighten it. I'm gonna just get a little bit of oil on my finger here and wet the seal. Make sure I've got a nice seal there. Okay, that is good and tight. And I'm going to go ahead and start to fill the motorcycle with oil. I'll probably put the bike on a stand so that it's level and I can actually see as the oil gets uh, towards the correct mark on the bike, I'll actually see it in the sight glass. And then once, once I see it there a little bit, what I can do is just put the back wheel back down and uh, just slowly add oil until it's at the proper level. And then I'll fire it up, let it settle for a little bit and check it again and uh, finalize my oil level. But again, this stuff is not rocket science. You just don't want to overfill the bike. All right, there's a sight glass. I'm going to bring the bike upright. And this is the final oil level here. So you want it just about at the full mark. Okay, we are continuing the service with the front wheel. And right here, I actually have a, let's say tread depth gauge. I also use it to measure my brake pad thickness. And I have measured the brake pad thickness on, on the front brakes at 430 seconds. I also use this to measure my front tire tread depth at 330 seconds. And in Pennsylvania, uh, 230 seconds is kind of the cutoff. So we still have a little bit of life left in this front tire. Uh, the bike has less than 4,000 miles on it. And another thing I check is we've checked the tire pressure. And also when you check these, it's good to check your valve stems, push them over like this. You want to look for dry rot cracks. And uh, you want to do that on both sides, on both your front and rear wheels. And that, I've, I've had one of these valve stems 
uh, give out on me at about 70 miles an hour and I was very very fortunate to maintain control of the bike and, and make it uh, home that day so that's just a, a critical thing that that was a, a lesson learned and after that every time I service a bike I do check the valve stems while we're right here we are also going to look at the front forks look for any oil residue you want to look for any oil around here or dark marks and these as I would expect on a you know a, a relatively new bike these are perfectly clean we'll step over here to the other side also perfectly clean which is great that's what you want to see Pennsylvania inspection uh, this expires in uh, June of 2022 so our inspection is current on this bike right now Another thing just in the front, we're going to check our front brake fluid level, and that looks good. Stand the bike up, uh, you can see it doesn't, it doesn't go down here, so that looks good. Before I finish here, I'm actually going to pull these little caps, and I'll check my tension on these guys. Uh, you just wouldn't want this bar rotating front or back while you're driving the bike. I've also, while we're here, I've adjusted the brake lever for my hands. I have fairly big hands, so this is kind of as far out uh, that I like my brakes to grab pretty far out. And I've also set my clutch tension, so I have just a little bit of replay here before it starts to grab and then you have that full range there you don't want this super tight like I say I got just a little bit of free play before it actually starts to pull the clutch in and that's that's what you want so let's move on to the rear of the bike we'll look at our rear brake fluid level now it looks fine it's where it needs to be when you stand the bike upright, it also comes a little bit up. That's where we want it. Um, what I did yesterday, I actually put a new rear tire. This has 630 seconds of tread depth. So I did that. I checked the rear brake pad uh, thickness. That's 530 seconds. And when they put the new tire on, I had them go ahead and just put a brand new valve stem on. So we're, again, we're running the 42 PSI in this rear tire. And everything here looks good. You can see the rear shock in there. And what I'm looking for, I really don't see any, like down below, I don't see any drips or leaks. It, it, and when I ride the bike, it seems to be functioning as it should. So no real worries with the rear shock there it, it's functioning like it should and no no leakage i will do also do a final just test drive around the block make sure that everything runs and drives like it should and we'll call this service finished we have adjusted the chain so we have just about an inch from top to bottom on my travel here and that's you want to actually adjust that at the tightest spot in the chain you don't want your chain over tight so today I'm going to wipe that down one more time. I had cleaned the chain with some WD-40 and uh, a uh, nylon brush. And the more residue you can get off, the better. This, this is what happens is on a lot of your uh, chain lubricants, dirt gets stuck in there and then it can act as an abrasive. And wear out your sprockets and wear out your chain prematurely. And we just don't want that. So. I've wiped this down a couple of times and I've also scrubbed it with a, like I say, a nylon brush. And sometimes they just take a little bit of extra love to try to get them as clean as possible.
and she's done we'll let that set up for oh probably five ten minutes and this this stuff actually sets up pretty hard and it doesn't seem to it, it seems to protect the chain without attracting a lot of dirt and that's why i use this product that's by maxima it's just called maxima chain wax because this bike has a aftermarket exhaust i just want to check my exhaust bolts here and here make sure that they were uh, installed properly and and that they're tight not not gonna come loose there all right i am test driving the 2018 Suzuki GSX-S 750. I just did the oil and filter change and pretty much a full service on this bike. Uh, it's a new addition to the stable here, so every new addition I get, I do the same service on it just to make sure for my peace of mind that it is ready to hit the road. And uh, yeah, everything seems to be functioning well. It's shifting nicely. No lights or bad noises. I can definitely tell an improvement in the handling now that I put a rear tire on it. Okay, so there you have it. That is how to service a 2018 Suzuki GSX-S 750. And uh, I did one final check after I came back from the test drive and looked, there were no leaks or drips, uh, no smell of burning oil or anything like that. Uh, like I say, the procedure is the same for almost any motorcycle. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to uh, leave them down below. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it entertaining and informative. All right, until next time, have a great day.